basically he was saying, these are not your kids. Like, why are you doing this to yourself? And, you know, it, I got to stop you for a second because yes. Lori's like shaking her head and looking at me and I'm trying to figure out why. Because you're getting ready to go. Exactly. That's what I was trying to tell Lori. Just <laughs> shut up and step back. <laughs> You're listening to the Nacho Kids Podcast, where we discuss all things step family related. Real stories, real people, real help. Your hosts are the creators of the Nacho Kids Method and the Nacho Kids Academy Step Family Coaching Team, Lori and David Sims. Good evening, David. Good evening, Lori. What's up? <laughs> all right, so let's talk about some stuff. Okay, let's talk. All right, so uh, just throw out. Two quick announcements. If you want to apply for a free month in the Nacho Kids Academy, we have a scholarship program going on. So you can send a video to contact us at nachokids.com with uh, just some stuff about your blend and why you feel like you should get a free month in the Academy. And it doesn't have to be a video of your pretty little face. It can be a video of anything. Yep. So do that. Apply for it. We have plenty to give away. All right. And the next one is we are requesting that you awesome people who listen to our podcast, give us some anonymous feedback. I started to say unanimous feedback. (laughs) So go to notyourkids.com slash feedback and uh, just fill out a quick form and give us some feedback and let us know what you like, dislike and all that jazz. All right. So let's get into what you and I want to discuss, which is how do you deal with part-time kids who still should be treated as full-time family? I see a lot in our Facebook group and other Facebook groups where the stepmom will say, well, the kid's only here every other week, so they don't need a whole bedroom. Mm -hmm. Or the stepkid's only here every other weekend, so they don't need their own bedroom. Right. They may not need their own bedroom, but they need their own space. Yeah. Even if that space is shared with another sibling, whether it be a step sibling, our sibling, whatever, the kid should still feel like that that's their home. Just because they're not there every single day doesn't mean that's not their home. So just say David traveled with his job and he's gone two weeks out of the month. When he comes home, it's still his home, right? Do, do I get to stay in the same bedroom? <laughs> <laughs> I take that look as a Yes. <laughs> Yes, it's still my home. And then I see stepmoms that'll say, you know, this is my house. And I'm adding that to the list of my pet peeves with Mm. blended families. Okay, if it's your house and your significant other lives there, um, is it not their house too? Even if you pay for all the bills, it is still legally their home. And you would have to evict them Mm -hmm. if you wanted them out. Not only that, but that that puts a... Really negative stake in the ground. Well, you know, it's my house, my rules. Well, it might be your house and your rules for your house, but those ain't your kids. <laughs> do y'all need me to repeat that for the people in the back? Yeah, do it again. It might be your house and quote, quote, your rules for your house, but those are not your kids. Right. And they're living there. These aren't visitors. Right. Just because they aren't there every day does not mean that they are visitors. Right. And in some cases, you probably treat visitors better. Because, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, when people come to our house and they're like, hey, we're coming to you know spend the night as visitors. I mean, you know, most people roll out the red carpet for them. Yeah. It's, you know, they make up the room and the bed and, you know, house is clean. I mean, you do a lot whenever you have somebody coming to visit. Not, not saying you should do that when your stepkids are coming to visit. We're just saying that um, you, they have to be treated as part of the family. And logistically... I mean, it makes sense that they shouldn't have their own room logistically, but we're not talking logistics. We're talking feelings. We're talking family members. We're talking how it affects your significant other, who is their bio parent. There's a lot there. You know, I remember growing up between my two sisters, you feel like you couldn't ever have anything that was just yours. So our parents were pretty much, what's yours is yours. And if the other person wants to borrow it, they need to ask. Mm -hmm. And so it gave us a sense of things belong to us. Right. And I think that stepkids, you know, they're toting stuff back and forth from one house to the next. Their friends might end up being, you know, 10 miles away versus two miles away when they're at one house. 
So they're going through a lot. And then to come somewhere and feel like that they're a quote, quote, visitor or an intruder, mm-hmm. it's not right. But we also know stepmoms that feel like that they're a visitor in their own home when the stepkids come. Yeah, because that's when you go to the opposite end of the spectrum. Right. When you, when you do treat them like special guests. Right. And so now you have the stepkids coming over, you know, let's say every other weekend, and it's literally roll out the red carpet and treat them differently than you would if they were there all the time. And I know there's always going to be that little bit of difference. We talk about that all the time in the academy about how your parenting style ends up being different based on a lot of different factors. But the point is you're going overboard with it. You're taking it to an extreme where it's, you know, that's how you get the term Disneyland dad or Disneyland mom or whatever, because you're just going all out. Like, you know, what's funny is I don't think I hear the term Disneyland mom as much as I had do Disneyland dad. Well, it's because mom typically has a, the better schedule with the kids. I mean, you right. don't, you don't, I don't I've never met a mom who has every other weekend. I'm sure they're out there. You were married to one or your ex was. Well, she did that by choice. Yeah. Anyway, go ahead. Anyway. Um, so, I mean, that's just the, the point is consider the two opposite ends of the spectrum here. One is make sure that you treat them like a full time family member, even if they're there part time. The other end of the spectrum is don't treat them like some kind of royalty special guest when they show up every other weekend either, where, where other people in the house now feel uncomfortable. But do understand that if your significant other does not have their child all the time, they are going to want to spend, or they should want to spend, most of their time with that child when they have them. And it's not necessarily guilty parent syndrome. It is reality that they're not spending all the time that they can with their kid because their kids are the other parents. Well, I mean, just think back when you and I first started dating. I mean, we would... We lived, what, 55 miles away from each other? No, 45 minutes. That's 55 miles. The way I drive. (laughs) That that, that was your other girlfriend. No, there were no others. So, well, you and I, we knew that, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but we'd see each other like Tuesday evening. I would drive down here on Tuesday evening. And then we'd see each other like, what was it, Saturday evening or Sunday? Mm -hmm. So, we would both, during that dating phase, we would make sure that things that we needed to have done were done on those days or before those days so that when we got to to see each other, we spent quality time together, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Which is very very similar to what we're saying about the stepkids. They're coming over. They're my kids. You know, they're coming over. And you're like, oh, my gosh, all you're doing is spending time with them the whole time. The whole time they're here, you're just all over them. But it's the same thing we did when we were dating, right? But then you have other stepmoms that complain that they don't spend any time with their kids and they expect her to take on all the responsibility of entertaining the kid and caretaking for the kid while they're there. Yeah. Now, I don't, I don't get that. No, I don't get that. Um, why people would do that, but I know that people, uh, I've heard people complain that, you know, my significant other, the kids come over they're you know, they're happy they're there, uh, but they don't do anything with them. It's just like, Oh, as long as they're here, I'm okay. I don't need to do anything with them. Right. Um, well, and my point with that is, is it's opposite ends of the spectrum. Yes. For and some it, stepmoms. And either way is unhealthy. Right. And if you feel like you're a visitor in your own home when the stepkids are there, honey, find you a hobby. Yeah. Go shopping. They're opening things from the COVID stuff. So <laughs> go get a pedicure I'm with sure. a friend. Go hang out. Go watch House Hunters International. Take a nap. Read a book. Shave them hairy legs. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) Some cultures like hairy legs. I know. I'm sorry. I apologize. (laughs) But my point is, look at that not as time that you're losing with your significant other. Look at it as me time. Yeah. Oh, good. Somebody gets to entertain my significant other so I can go do something. (laughs) Right. I think that's how you look at it some. That it was like, okay, I don't have to. Not that you looked for reasons not to do things with me, but it was almost like, okay, cool. He's busy doing something else. And now I can go do some of these other things and I don't have to worry about including him or, or interrupting him or whatever. I can go do my own thing. Well, that, or I would just hang out with my son. Right. Which is perfect. If he wasn't trying to hang out with your kids. Well, here's another interesting thing that we dealt with. And we did do things together. Yeah. Well, that was the point I was about to make is 
I think it's sometimes a mistake when step families try to do everything together all the time. Yes. Because you don't give the kids that individual attention. Because let's face it, my kids, even though they've never told me this, they could have looked at your son and said, I don't understand or I don't like the fact that you get access to my dad all the time. Mm -hmm. Now, they never said that, and I, but I don't know that they ever didn't feel that. This is so funny that you're talking about this because Laura Petherbridge talked about this the other day when we were on a call having a conversation about when her dad got remarried, she was resentful toward his new kids because they had him all the time. Right. And her stepmom did not want her dad doing things with just her and leaving out the other kids. Exactly. But he needed to spend time with just her because she needed that. Right. And, and this is where you start seeing stepmoms particularly complaining that every time the stepkid's here, he, you know, they're all over him and they won't leave him alone. They're sitting in his lap. They, you know, they have to go sit outside the bathroom door when he's using the bathroom. And send him little love notes on index cards. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that is a super cry for please pay me some attention. I need to feel loved. I need to feel like I'm part of your life. That's. And I'm I'm not big on the, well, they're just kids. I'm usually not real big on that because people would say that to me with David's kids. Well, yeah, they are just kids, but they are still trying to figure out how to tie me to that tree and burn me. <laughs> but the reality of it is these kids need their parent. Don't be jealous that they're wanting to spend time with their bio parent. Like I said, look at it as free time for you to chill, to have me time, to do whatever. But also look at it as you are married or in a relationship with an awesome person that wants to spend time with their kids. Yeah. And the, and the kids need to feel like, number one, that they're loved, and number two, that they matter. And I think sometimes we skip some of those. Like, they know they're loved, but they don't maybe often know that they matter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And two, I'm sitting here thinking as we're talking, and I'm like, I can see the stepmom be like, well, he just changes, and he ignores me when they're here, and all that stuff. Well, I say this all the time. What you focus on will grow. Mm -hmm. So you can focus on, oh, he puts me on the back burner when they're here. Or you can say, you know what? He is awesome stepping up and spending time with his kids. Yep. And you can be involved in that sometimes, or you cannot be. It's up to you. And it's up to your stress level. If it stresses you out to all hang out together, then no, don't do it. You're going to make it everybody miserable. Or... Just look at it as when they are here, they are kids, and they're not going to be here forever, and they need to spend time with their bio parent. Yeah, I mean, do you want those kids to look back, you know, let's say 10 years? I know some of you are going, I don't know if I can do 10 years. <laughs> hey, let's look, say, we, we are hitting on year 11, if we can do what you can. Yeah. But let's say you look back 10 years from now. Do you want those kids to say, man, this stepmom was awesome. Every time we came over... You know, she made sure we got to spend time with our dad. Uh, or do you want to say every time we come over, she was always butting in and getting mad because we were trying to spend time with him and keeping us away from him. I mean, it only plays your favor when you allow them to have that access to their bio parent. And I don't think that I ever um, tried to make you decide who you're going to spend time with me or your kids. It was almost like you said, when they were here, that was me time, whether it was me time to spend time with my son or me time to do something for myself or whatever. Yeah. The, the challenge I have was I tried to spend individual time with four kids without my four kids. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I don't recall that you ever said anything like, well, what about spending individual time with my kid? I don't think, I don't recall you ever saying that. No. Um, the, but the challenge for me was if I were going to spend time with one of my kids while they were here, that means the other three were in your care. Or I had to find somebody else to care for them. Right. And so, you know, depending on the stage we were at at the time, that was very, very difficult or impossible to do. Yeah. At one point it was, you are not leaving those kids with me. Right. Period. And so I, I couldn't do it. Uh, or I would have to make other arrangements. And then, you know. Um, Life just, got in the way. It, you yeah. work and. It was just difficult. It was very difficult. Mm -hmm. So, um, but, you know, I did the best I could with what I had. Uh, although. I think like most people probably look back on and go, oh, I could have done better. But I mean, it's, what's done is done. My kids feel like I did a fantastic job because they often tell me. <laughs> and they think I'm an awesome stepmom. Yeah. So I'm I'm super appreciative that, that my kids early on, even, I mean, they're 
the triplets are 20, Avery's 21, the oldest. So I'm, I'm glad that I didn't have to wait till they were 30 or 40 to start being appreciative of, of, um, my parenting role and, and Lori's role and all that. So I know they probably won't listen to this, but I do appreciate it. And I'm thankful for it because it does, uh, it does make a big difference when they tell me that, you know, I did a great job or, you know, they hope that they're a dad like I was. I mean, that's what better. Compliment. Yeah. Rather than what my kid says. <laughs> All anyway, right. um, we've actually talked about a lot of things that are discussed in this podcast interview. Cool. Feeling like a single parent. Mm-hmm. That's it's an often complaint. Yes, it is an often. <laughs> I was wondering if he's going to follow me on that. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Whatever you said, David. It is often a complaint we hear. Different parenting styles. Yep. Visiting your own home. Yep. And one thing we didn't talk about, but we will talk about it in this interview is feeling like a roommate with mm-hmm. your significant other. Yeah. That's easy to happen. And of course, David has something to say about, well, some roommates don't. Da, 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 da. I'd said that. Yeah, you did. Did I say it was a roommate with benefits? No, <laughs> uh, I don't think you did. You probably did. I probably did. I might've edited that out. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, this lady, y'all, Are you ready? Between her stepkids and her bio kids, there are, drum roll, David, nine. Ooh. You know, that number that comes after eight and before 10, there are nine kids. She's got enough to do a real Brady Bunch collage. Five stepkids and four bio kids. And... Of those five stepkids, there are three bio moms. What? Dun, 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 dun. Man, you talking about stress levels. Ooh, lordy. We need to reach out to this lady in about a year. Oh, she's doing good. I know. That's what I'm saying. We need to reach out to her in about a year and be like, how's it going? And what are you doing? <laughs> she's not showing. <laughs> <laughs> That's how she's surviving. She's not showing. She's not only surviving, folks, with Nacho, she's is thriving. Did you say she's a thriving? She's a thriving. <laughs> she's a thriving with the nacho. <laughs> so let's get to listening. There is a way to save your sanity and your relationship, and it's called the Nacho Kids Academy. In the Nacho Kids Academy, you will learn the skills and knowledge to properly nacho, techniques to handle step family challenges, ways to improve your communication, and much, much more. Visit NachoKidsAcademy.com and sign up today to join other step parents who are seeing the life changing benefits of nachoing. Again, that's NachoKidsAcademy.com. Today, we have stepmom Paige. Paige, how many stepkids and bio kids do you have total? Just tell us. Okay, I have five stepchildren and I have four biological children. So together, there are nine. <laughs> and so therefore, mm. we're a family of 11. Yes. <laughs> and a grandbaby, which is, a, which is exciting. So Holy moly. <laughs> mm. Yeah, my husband's got uh, from 25 all the way to eight. And, um, and then, and then I have, um, 20 and um, my youngest is 13. So they're, they're scattered all over the place as far as ages. And see, I had to jump straight in with that. I couldn't say, Hey Paige, how are you? Because I just had to be like, look, listen to how many young as this kid, this woman's got nine, David. Wow. Yeah. No, I, I don't even know what to say. It must've been some cold winters. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I, just ignore David. Just don't even <laughs> respond to him. Don't get him going. Well, the, look, the crazy part is, is what I, when, you know, I was saying that, you know, when you're in love, this just sounds almost completely normal. And now, you know, when I do tell people uh, we've got nine kids between us, um, I mean, that's kind of the normal reaction that I get. But I do remember asking my husband when we were just dating at the time. And what's kind of neat is me and my husband, we went actually to high school together and we... um we're reunited after both of our, we both went through divorces, totally different times. And we were disconnected for many, many years. And we just happened to run across each other. And we've been pretty much connected ever since. But uh, whenever we uh, were together and we started talking about our kids and we were both kind of amazed, we were both had big families. I said, God, does it, does it scare you to have 
possibly nine kids, like if this goes any further. And he was like, no, it's really not that scary with the kids. He said, it's the 40 something grandkids that really scare me. <laughs> so, <laughs> I guess, <laughs> um, so yeah, so I guess we do have a, a good potential of having a lot of grandkids underneath our belt one day. So. <laughs> Mm, man, you yeah. might want to get some stalking greyhound or something. <laughs> it's the truth. It's the truth. But you know, David and I have joked about that a lot. You know, with him having four boys, it's like if they each had four, then that'd be sixteen grandkids. Yes, but we yes. know one of them says that he's not having kids, and if he has any, he's putting them up for adoption. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, when you start talking to somebody who's got all those kids, I'm sure you had conversations about logistics right yes yeah so how did that how did that work as far as conversations with like how are we going to travel together and you know did you have to get a bigger house and all kind of craziness like that it, yeah and um that was kind of interesting in and of itself because we when we were dating and very uh got engaged um and we've only been married for two and a half years we were kind of in that transitional stage of our three oldest, uh, my husband has three older boys, which is 25, 20, and 19. And I have a 20 year old daughter. Well, so that's four children all together that we were like, okay, they're kind of in that transitional stage of getting them past the 18, trying to, you know, get them out on their own. So our 25 year old lives by himself. The 20 year old lives with, um, his mom. And then the 19-year-old lives with us and my 20-year-old daughter, she actually has an apartment. So it is very doable because while we basically did whenever we were shopping for houses, we just had to have a five bedroom. And I'm a real estate agent. So lucky for us, I was able to kind of get the inside scoop and, <laughs> and get a good house that fit us uh, and kind of dig a little deep in that. But it, it definitely caused us to kind of think creative because... Uh, we were both in situations where we owned our own property before, and we both were wanting to keep our properties and maybe turn them into a rental investment or maybe, you know, have it an opportunity for our older kids to be able to have that as a backup if they wanted to live there. So it did just cause us to have these non-traditional conversations that, um, I guess, out of the box questions. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Like, it's not the normal conversations that you really have to kind of really think outside the box when you're putting two big blended families together. Yeah. I mean, you have to have a huge kitchen table. You yeah. have to drive a bus. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we, we did take our first family vacation and that was very interesting because we had to bring my mother-in-law and she flew two of the kids and then the rest of the kids uh, drove with us. And then our older kids, of course, had to drive. So Again, you just have to think outside of the box and think creatively because piling all these kids in one car is not even possible. You know what I'm saying? So it just it definitely causes those conversations to constantly happen to make things work. And, and we do. <laughs> I can't imagine us planning a vacation with all of our kids. It's hard enough to get them together for Thanksgiving. Yeah. It, it, mm -hmm. And it's the truth. Even with our age dynamic, we, me and Todd always say we kind of feel like two separate groups of parents. Uh, we have our older kids, you know, that are in their 20s um, and our 19 year old. And then we have the younger kids, which are 16, 15, 14 and 13. So, I mean, so it's like they are literally lined up right behind each other. So it's, it's, we have our group of our older kids and then we have our younger kids. Mm. And then an eight year old. And then an eight year old, my eight year old stepson. Yes. Well, right. I stop there. Just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, my head hurts already. <laughs> well, you want okay, so I'm gonna let, I'm gonna make your head hurt just a little bit more because where this gets a little bit, um, I don't know, a little. I, again, I hate to use the word crazy. I think it's uh, not really explaining what I want. But I also have three bio moms. My husband has three moms to his children, so there is mm. a huge dynamic. And I have a, you know, of course, I have a ex husband and his wife, so it's. When I tell you it is just a major big dynamic that goes on and you feel it more or less like we're just getting out the holiday season and stuff like that. So you, these are the times that you really do feel the differences in the dynamics, you know, and, and just you got to almost just take a deep breath at this point. Three bio moms. Three bio moms. <laughs> yeah. Um the ironic part about this, and this is just, you know, I never, I never know how people are going to take this, but again, because of, you know, the community that we were brought up in, um, I knew my husband's bio moms. 
You see what I'm saying? Because our kids all go to school together. This wasn't, you know, it wasn't like they were in different school districts or we were in different areas. We were, ironically enough, never saw each other for almost 20 years, but our children went to the same school. So hmm. I, I, but I had more of a connection with the bio moms with our kids being in similar ages. Um, my stepdaughter and my daughter are good friends actually and played on the same softball teams growing up and even played basketball together even before me and my husband were together. So there was always that kind of relationship between the kids. And um, so it's been just, it's been interesting because it wasn't like I didn't know the bio moms before me and me and my husband got married. I, I did have a somewhat relationship with them or knew of them um, because of just the relationship between my kids and their kids. <laughs> Is this crazy for you enough already? Y'all can start a club. <laughs> no, I'm just thinking of y'all all sitting in the parent section. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, holding I, hands, kumbaya. <laughs> if, 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 well, we, okay, so we, funny story is, and this is where you just almost got it. You really do gain such a huge sense of humor and able to kind of like laugh at yourself a little bit because, you know, it's like, if not, I, you'll I, cry. yes, yes, yes. Cause it's like, I can't even imagine what people are thinking because it's our, it was our daughters. Um, my, my daughter, my 20 year old now, but she was, of course, 18 when she graduated and my husband. Uh, son, they were actually in the same grade together and they graduated the same year and they were, they were friends um, or, you know, at least knew of each other. Well, they had senior night. And can you imagine how big, you know, it was like we had this huge clan of people, um, you know, walking across the field, you know, for their senior night and we're switching places and switching, you know, have, because I wanted to walk across with Tristan and then I needed to walk across with, you know, my daughter. So, it's just, you just almost have to laugh at yourself and it does, it does create, um, you do have to just sit back and say, you know what, if like, I love it, Lori, how you said it. If, if I can't laugh about it, I'm going to cry about it. So I choose to laugh about it. <laughs> yeah. Well, at least your daughter and his son didn't date. No, no. In <laughs> fact, um, her best friend was, uh, you know, dating my stepson at one time, but so they, like I said, there was a, a good relationship and, they were, you know, of course, very accepting of me and, you know, Todd dating at the time, but they were also transitioning outside of the house. And I think that that's what kind of helped them keep things in perspective. I don't think they ever would have wanted to live under the same roof together. Um, so we were right. conscious about that, even dating and when we were kind of planning on getting married, because we definitely wanted to see them make that transition out of our homes um, before we took the next step and got married. So that was something that was important. You said y'all were together five years? Yes. And have been married two and a half? Two and a half, correct. Okay. All right. I'm yeah. trying to think of what to ask because <laughs> I'm, I'm still stumped on the nine kids, three BMs. Yeah. Yeah. And and, and we do have, um, it, it's just one of those scenarios on sometimes of, you know, we talk about or I hear on the podcast quite a bit. And this is where, you know, the podcast and just, you know, hearing y'all stories and hearing other people's stories is just, you know, a nice validation because every step family situation is so extremely different. And I have a good relationship because of not showing that y'all really brought to my attention. I am so grateful because I think it has afforded me to have a cordial relationship with the mothers. Um, versus it getting out of control because of my, let me put it like this, I'm, and I hope I'm not um, babbling. I, whenever you go into, you said this over and over, you go into a, a step family, you do have these unrealistic expectations on how you want things to be and you want them to be as normal as possible. And, you know, I was six years single. And so in my head, it was beautiful to bring back, uh, you know, a man in the house and I was able to buy a nice home with my husband and I was just, I had these expectations and I went overboard with my eight-year-old stepson and my 13-year-old stepdaughter and, you know, just trying to be there for them and trying to, you know, um, go to every parent teacher conference and every sporting event. And it was running me ragged. And, um, and at the same time, it was causing conflict due to my, not because of what the bio moms were doing or they weren't high conflict. It was more the fact that my boundaries were not being set up correctly, and it was causing me to have some kind of re resentment because 
my boundaries were off place. Does that make sense? Right, because you were trying to fit in somewhere that there wasn't an empty space in the first place. Thank you. You just said, yeah, you said it perfect. And that's been a hard thing for me to gulp and to realize and to accept. Um, Because, you know, I have four kids of my own. It was just, it was, it just felt natural to go into that mom position and, and, Mm -hmm. and feel like I needed to take over. And my husband really didn't mind it. He is a little bit more of a passive personality where he didn't mind me, you know, going in and, Sitting, sitting them down and making them do this and making them clean their room and making them. And I, I'm not a drill sergeant by any means, but I do. I'm, I'm high expectations, and I was just treating them like I was treating my own kids, and it just wasn't flying. It was um, one of those situations where the kids were almost happier um, when we first got married, and they, my kids included, it was they were just starting to see. <laughs> I, I almost had a better relationship with my stepchildren before we got married. And then it was t- the relationships just started going backwards because of my boundaries that were not at all appropriate. Right. You were overstepping. Overstepping to the max. And did, and we get told wrong advice all the time <laughs> coming in to step families. And I, that is why I think I've told you that I'm, I'm, I'm an advocate for y'all's podcast and I don't care who it is. I will say you need to, you need to connect yourself with this podcast to this website uh, with Nacho Kids because this is good, solid advice. The, y'all talk about it all the time, loving your stepchildren as your own and you knew what you were getting into. All these cliches, even whenever I was, you know, before getting married, I was even getting some pre-Christian counseling and, and there's, that that's even not some of that's even off big time and out of ignorance um it's we're being told wrong a lot of times and it it it's, it, it calls just some calls me to extend myself so thin and it is taking a long time to get that back um and to get a good gripping and it's been so refreshing because when me and my stepdaughter were heading down a path of that could have been destructive it might take her three or four days to want to have a conversation with me once she comes back into our house. But by day four, she's picking with me. So, you know, we're, we're back in each other's space, back at each other's quarters. We can pat each other on the back. But it might take four days before she really wants to talk to me. And before, when that kind of behavior would take place, I took it personal. I, th- I took it as disrespectful. Um, I got in her face a few times, which is completely, I look back now and I'm almost embarrassed to say that out loud. Because I took it as disrespect. And y'all have said something on your podcast that said, you know, sometimes the kids have got to rule the relationship in the beginning. And when I started allowing that to happen, and I started seeing that this is kind of a trend here, it takes her about three or four days to warm back up to me. Um, and then it all ends up panning out okay. She is a only daughter. And her mom is still, she, her mom is not married. So it's just them two whenever she goes back to her mom's house. So mm-hmm. I, I deal with the, I deal with three, they don't go back to one house and where they all are looking and thinking and, and operating alike. They all go to three different separate places. Then they come back to with our three house. Three different sets of rules. Yes. Yes. And so I, I, I can only imagine just the height of emotion that that as a, you know, she's 13. And that's probably a little bit emotional going, you know, from one extreme. She's the only child. Her mom's not married. And then she comes back to our house and it's a zoo. Um, mm-hmm. I, I can imagine <laughs> it takes about four days for her to, you know, want to have a conversation with me. You know, she's having to kind of adjust. So Now, Paige, you, you talked about, um, you know, all the bad advice and all that. I do wonder yeah. if someone had come to you uh, right before you got married and, you know, things were good. And if they would have given you the same advice that you learned through Not Your Kids, would you have thought it was crazy? That is such a good question <laughs> because um, I don't know, because I think when you're in love, you you do feel so invincible and you do feel like you've got all the answers and love conquers all and we'll be able to be happy. I don't know. That's a great question. And maybe I was introduced to this at the right time. Um, I would I would certainly hope I would. Um, but I, when I tell you it was left field is what I was being told. Um, and, it, <laughs> and, and, and it wasn't even like I was being told so much. It's a very silent community um, be, being a blended family. 
uh, you know, and, and I don't think we understand. I, I know for a fact I didn't understand what I was getting myself into. Um, I knew that his kids loved me and my kids loved him. And um, I knew that I had a decent enough relationship with, you know, the baby, the moms of his children. And, and I knew that me and Todd loved each other. So it just, to me, it was just like, we're just going to make this work. And I knew that I was a good parent and I was trying to trust my own instincts and your natural instincts is not is your natural instincts does not match up with a blended family. You, it is literally you have to be taught and you have to trust the system because it is you you want to you want a mother you want to you want them to love you and you want that respect back and you want to care for them and you want them to care for you back and um and it's crushing when it doesn't happen so. To answer your question, I certainly hope that I would have taken this advice, but it, it definitely would have seemed foreign to me because we were, we were, I think we were kind of in a little utopia world <laughs> in the beginning, thinking mm-hmm. that it was just all good. They were all good friends and we just, you know, kind of thought that everything was just going to be perfect. So We say that a lot when when people learn of Nacho. If It really depends on where they're at in their relationship and we can always tell uh, that often people will you know find nacho or they'll reach out to to it once they've hit that point where it's like nothing else is working i i have nothing else to lose i'll give it a try yep and then that's when they do it every so often we'll run into somebody like we we met somebody who i think they were like three months into their um uh, to their marriage and they're like yeah we're doing nacho and i'm like dude i wish i'd have known (laughs) about that that early yes yes and i that's how i kind of i found y'all was out of desperation and doing some um just doing some online research and podcast research and whenever i ran across y'all it was it i was definitely searching at the time um i Mm -hmm. telling Lori, uh you know through just our emails uh with i've started a local community that is going to be called blended bloopers and Mm -hmm. all i wanted all i want from that is because it is like we've just named it to be the silent community and we don't want it to be anymore. We want it to be talked about. Um, it's just like when somebody becomes pregnant, you're so quick to be, to reach out and try to help and try to give resources. I, I want that in the same thing with the blended community. You want everybody giving you advice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but good, but with, with good resources, not, not, this is how I think this is what I think this, you know, but just a, a place where people know how to get good resources and where it is getting actually talked about in a truthful, but also lighter side. Um, yeah. It, Even in the step family community f- from the people that are out there doing, doing the coaching and counseling and all that, there's still a, a lot of people that look at, you know, not your kids as being like, well, what in the world are they doing? Why, why are they saying to do that? That's, that's just terrible. And it makes no sense. And, um, and especially when you look at going outside the blended family, when you start explaining our methodology and things we talk about to people that aren't blended families, Oh my gosh. It's like, how dare you? Yes. <laughs> oh yeah. And then what happens is somebody that didn't understand nachoing or criticized it, you'll see them start sliding in and they'll be like, Man, things just changed, and it's like welcome to the dark side. Because <laughs> <laughs> it can switch so quick. It, it, that oh, yeah, you just yeah. said something. It can change so quick. I can be at a height of feeling like everything is just grooving in our family, and then it can take one little. I mean, it's not anything that I might do; they might do. But I mean, I'm talking about hormonal change. Anything can switch, and it can be a totally different day. Um, because we've got all these, you know, we've got nothing but teenage hormones coming through the house. So it, it can change mm-hmm. so quick and it can change daily. And y'all said it so great the other day. And one of the podcasts that I heard was, it's, you don't have to separate yourself from everything. It's what causes stress and what causes stress on y'all's relationship. And that has been a big right. saving grace in my decision making on what, what to kind of go forward and act on or what to back off and, um, and kind of take my hands off of, because it's, it, is this going to cause strain? Is this going to, you know, stress me out? And if so, then just back up and go right. on your merry way. 
Yeah. And a lot of times you have to ask yourself, does it really matter as much as I'm letting it? Yes. It's a great question to ask because um, as I was confessing to you, with my 19-year-old still living at the home, there are decisions that are being made that my husband, he just doesn't see a problem with it. And, um, and I'll be as specific to tell y'all. I mean, I've got, he lives in the little mother-in-law suite that's still connected to the home, though. So it isn't like he's got his apartment. I mean, he, he's still inside of our house. And but um, so long story short, there there's days that I have to ask myself that very question. And I, I'm so glad because I was running that relationship into the ground and it was causing conflict between me and my husband as far as, you know, girls staying in the night or, you know, the in and out of cars to the, in the driveways at all hours and just anything that you can think of that you're going to probably deal with a 19 year old. Um, and he's not, he's a great kid. That's, that's what I, I want to make very clear is the fact that I just, I needed to step back and say, this is just not for me to, not for me to over care about. Like why, why am I letting this? Kid. It is not my kid. That's right. And why, why, <laughs> am I, why am I letting this consume me? Why am I? So it causes me to ask myself and, and it causes me to, to have some self-reflection and, pause like we talked about before just be quiet and just pause for a second yeah because we briefly chatted before we started Mm -hmm. recording and one of the things that i mentioned was that a lot of times the step moms in particular but we'll say step parents Mm -hmm. they feel like they have to look elsewhere rather than themselves to see what their contribution is to the issues yes yeah. And it's easier to blame the kids. They're kids. They're annoying. They're teenagers. They're stinky. They're smelly. They're dirty. They're disgusting. They're, uh, you know. They're yeah. not yours. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh, that man. smell don't smell as bad when they're not your kids. Yeah. Yeah. So it, 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 it's a crazy roller coaster of emotions um, on even how you feel towards them if your boundaries are not in the correct place. Um, cause mm-hmm. being so mad at them when, if, if I would tell you a story, you would probably look at me like you got mad about that, but mm-hmm. it was just because I, I'm in the height of the moment and, you know, uh, it, it's just because, you know, I, and I take things a different way. And so therefore, however I see it is how it really went down. Right. And, <laughs> and that's not always the truth because my height of emotion was like up at, you know, level 10 and they're just looking at me like, you've lost your mind. And that's <laughs> where I've made the vow that I'm not going to look like a crazy person because of me overextending myself. And then at the end of the day, I'm going, but wait a minute. Why doesn't anybody look at it the way that I'm looking at it? And, um, and it, it, I don't, I'm going to be honest. It would put me to bed sometimes. And I would literally have the conversations with myself instead of, you know, investing in my marriage and instead of, you know, doing things to lift my husband up or lift our family up, I would spend days at a time going, what have I gotten myself into? Screw this. I mean, I'm just being completely vulnerable and just honest for a second. And I would pout and I would, and I would isolate myself and I would be full of regret. And is that really the legacy that I want to leave my biological kids and my stepchildren and is that really the impression that I want to leave with my husband and I was just I guess I just had to kind of be in that little dark place for me to just self-reflect and say this is not really just the situation this is really how you're dealing with the situation that's causing a lot of the issues right Mm -hmm. so I'm interested to know what your husband thought about all this like does he know anything about you doing this thing called nacho and um, did he he does. Okay. How did yeah. that go? Um, good, but it's been a little bit of an adjustment, which is kind of a little bit of a shock to me. Um, I had an open conversation with him about it whenever we um, we actually met some of the older kids going skiing, and it just we had a good little long uh, two hours to get to the resort, and I, I was just da 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 da, you know, talking about nacho kids, and I was you know listening to a podcast in my headphones, so I was just you know it was kind of fresh and brought out some good conversation, and. Um, he 100% believes in the philosophy of Nacho Kids. Um, I, I can't even tell you. I think my husband was trying to tell me 
lack of better words, and he was used in different phrases and stuff, but basically he was saying, these are not your kids. Like, why are you doing this to yourself? And, you know. It, I got to stop you for a second because yeah. Lori's like shaking her head and looking at me, and I'm trying to figure out why. Because you're getting ready to go, exactly. That's what I was trying to tell Lori, to <laughs> shut up and step back. <laughs> okay. Uh, just making sure we were talking about the same thing. Oh, my thing. gosh. I love it. I set that up, Lori. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. I'm used to it by now. Look, do you know how many times we had to go pay this guy to tell her the same thing I was telling her? Oh, my goodness. I know. <laughs> don't I know. Sh- don't, she's going to shoot me with a Nerf gun. Here it goes. <laughs> so it was easy for him to say it, but with, my, with our eight-year-old stepson, because he does love me and he still does like that motherly role because, you know, an eight-year-old boy likes having a mom around, you know? I mean, mm-hmm. um to fix his milk all the way to putting a bandaid on. And so he likes having a mom or or that motherly figure around. And I will still challenge my husband and say, you know what you say that you, you know, you've been telling me about the nacho thing, but sometimes like you push crews towards me, my, you know, to take care of this or uh, you deal with this because this is, you're better at this department. And I've had to kind of tell so, you know, or just at least have the conversation with him. Like sometimes I'm going to have to scoot them right back to you because you need to deal with this, not me. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, so it can't be just what you, what you want and when you want it. Um, so I've had to be kind of conscious of that because I do kind of fall into, um, it will cause conflict in the mornings. Like if I'm seeing that my steps on it and brushing his teeth or he's not wanting to put on his shoes and, it was causing stress because again, we've got other kids that are getting ready for school and, you know, having to, um, all their little deadlines going on. And I've had to, and even though it sounds minor, I've just, that's been just one more thing that I've had to step back on. And I've, but it's had to call, it's had to, it's had to come with a conversation with my husband. So he understood my intentions. My intentions was not to put my hand up to my steps on, but it was to say, it's causing stress. And if it doesn't bother you, it can't bother me. And I've I got to let it go. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, but it, it, it definitely has had to cause, I mean, it's definitely caused some good communication on some things that I've kind of caught myself on on still overextending on some things, especially with my stepson being young. Yeah. And you've been around him for what, three years? Um, married for almost three, but I've been around him for five. So. Oh, my math is not good today. Yeah, no, it's all good. <laughs> I so knew yeah, that. He was That's a, what's so scary. <laughs> so yeah, he was a baby, you know, when. I got to know him. And uh, so that's, it's been very good. I mean, like it's, it's simple questions that y'all have challenged me to ask myself and that's where I'll leave it. You know, is this causing stress? Is this causing a strain between our relationship? Um, and, and is this becoming a bigger deal than what it needs to be? And if the answers are yes, it's just, it's, it's, I got to, I need to step back. And so it's, it's great to have those little self-assessments and I can tell you, that the relationship between not only my stepchildren, but b- between my kids, it's been, they've even noticed a difference in the overall attitude of me and uh, a little bit more of the peace that's in our house. And I hate to say it, but I'm the common denominator. <laughs> I was the one that, <laughs> I was the one causing the stress and they're obviously noticing a, a difference because some things have been put in the proper, the proper perspective. Right. Yeah. We talked to a few um, episodes back about, people not separating the person from the role. Mm-hmm. And so <laughs> when the stepmom comes in, they're even though they're replacing a person, they're not replacing the role yeah. of that person. They're yeah. only replacing part of it. They're replacing the the mate role, but they're not replacing the parent role. Mm-hmm. Yes. I want to go back to something, if you don't mind. Mm-hmm. I want to hear a story about when you flipped up uh, flipped out over something stupid. <laughs> Guys. <laughs> Okay. I'll tell you mine. Okay. Well, you want to? You want to? You <laughs> want to go one? first for me? <laughs> I'll go first. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna go with the empty cereal box <laughs> <laughs> because I could be having the best day. <sighs> drive home from work, swing by the grocery store, go to get groceries, put up groceries. You know, which is not fun really for most people, right. especially unloading the car and all that stuff. And you come in. And you go in the pantry and there's an empty cereal box. Absolutely. I feel you. You would have thought those kids would have just like threw doo-doo at me or something (laughs) because it made me so mad. Lori, I get it. Let me tell you a secret, Paige. Now when she comes home and there's an empty cereal box, 
and her son's the one that done it. She's like, oh, <laughs> that's so precious. He left the empty cereal box. <laughs> She don't say doggone thing. She don't get mad. She don't do nothing. Because that's my kid. It's the truth. (laughs) It is the truth. Like, I mean, I I will pick up towels all day long if it's, you know, it's my kids and I'll hang them back up. And like, oh, good. They took their bath. Well, I pick up one of the set kids (laughs) towels and I want to slap them with it, you know. So, yeah. So I totally feel your pain. But uh, the other day. And not, I say the other day, I, I have the tendency to say that this was, of course, a while back. And my, uh, my stepson, my poor little stepson is playing his little video games and he, he's, you know, he's eight and hyperactive and getting into his game where he takes off his sheet. I mean, he's hopping on his bed and he's, you know, into his game. And so we go to, we are getting ready for bed and you might as well thought that he took scissors and cut his sheets up and, you know, put it in, you know, drawers because I'm thinking, I literally was like, I don't understand why you have to get this crazy and where your sheets come out. Did it? And, and I'm like, oh, Paige, go in the corner right now and put your nose in the corner and have an attitude adjustment <laughs> because you are crazy. <laughs> You're flipping out over the sheets, lady. Step back from the bed. I am like going, oh, yeah. So my, even, even my 16-year-old son was like, are you serious, mama? Like, calm down. <laughs> That was a a reality check of get it together, you know? So yeah, I have definitely had my moments and I'm I'm really trying hard not to keep repeating them because I I literally am having to put myself in the corner each time now. Um, Well, I'm just proud of you for not flipping out (laughs) on your kid for saying that about, (laughs) hey, calm down, seriously. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Well, again, those are, that's just the, honest to God, truth of what was kind of starting to happen. And, um, you know, even on our way when we went on our first family vacation and um, my stepdaughter was in my eyes being disrespectful and I snapped at her and it took my kids going, she did not. Like you're angry from this and this and this from the other day and you're carrying it into today and it needs to stop. Like, you know, it's obvious at this point. And I'm like, I am so humiliated. Okay. Okay. And that was, that was the first day of our family vacation where we were all together and (laughs) I could cry talking about it because I was so humiliated. And I really sat in the bathroom and I just cried and I said, okay, like that was probably my eye opening moment of I'm, this is getting, this is getting out of hand page. Like, come on. Um, So yeah, at that point, it's not telling yourself you need to do it. It's like, I've got to do it. I've got to do it. I've, I've got to do it because I am mixing so many things. I guess the best way of putting it is there were so many things in my bucket that I was so upset about. And and because some things that were causing conflict between us at the time were legit. I didn't make up everything, but it was causing every little thing to be blown up. And which is just honestly not fair. Um, and like you said, they're, they're kids. And so I never did anything destructive by any means, but it was, it just, I want to protect that relationship with my whole heart and she's 13 right now, about to turn 14. And I do want us to look back when she's 18, 19 years old, and we've got a good relationship. And it wasn't all she remembers is me flying off the deep end on, on stupid little stuff, you know. So uh, I am I know I keep saying it, but I am so grateful. And I know that this was a godsend on me getting to find y'all because I'm an avid listener. I go back whenever like y'all are in between podcasts and I'm able to go back and look at previous, even listen to previous interviews. And I can honestly say, I feel like a different person and it is mended already. It has mended relationships inside of our household. Um, now how long have you been not showing? Um, great. Right at, let's say that was so since February of last year of 2019. Okay. So we're, you're coming up on what, 11 months, 12 months. Yes. 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 Okay. So that's a, that's a lot. That's a big turnaround. Yeah. Oh, it's, and I'm so happy for you. Thanks. Well, I'm, I'm so happy I found (laughs) y'all. Do you remember what the first thing was that, that you implemented that, that took the pressure off? Um, yeah, with, at, on, it was on our vacation. Um, I tried to literally, I know this probably sounds a little extreme, but I did just try to stay clear. Um, I mean, it, we were skiing. Um, I just kind of had it in my head. I will help and be available for my kids. And Todd's going to just have to take care of his. Like, I just, it, it, that's where 
because it wasn't the fact that um like that wasn't the first time I'd heard of Nacho Kids. It was the first time that like I was like I, I've got to dig into this because um, uh, I knew of Nacho Kids pretty much very close to right after I got married. Um, I, I came across it, but I came I went back searching for y'all after that experience on the first day of my family vacation. Long story short, that that's that's where it kind of started on you know Paige. I, I re, just relieve the pressure. You let yourself off the hook until you have, until you're able to put some, you know, perspective and some guidance into this and get some good counsel. Take a step back and protect that relationship. So we had a great family vacation because I really do think I would have just kept overextending and and bending over backwards and making the vac- making the vacation stressful. And it ended up turning out to be a great, great, great vacation. Um, so that was my sign number one that like, oh my gosh, I backed off a little bit and it was good. They're like, woo, go page with your bad self. <laughs> yeah. That was kind of my that was kind of my next question, which which was, you know, at what point do you did you realize like, holy crap, this stuff works? <laughs> oh, um, it just it really I mean, I guess the vacation was a they going coming home and extending it to them getting ready for school and things of that nature. Because we don't really have a lot of fighting inside the house. Um, they, they do get, I'm so blessed because my kids and his kids get along so well. And they're, they, um, they've they got great mothers. Um, so, um, and my kids have got a great father. So overall, we're not all besties by any means. But in the same sense, there's at least a cordial relationship, um, you know, where there is some, especially with them getting older and we're all part of the same community. We're able to co-parent. Um, like I said, we don't hang out, so to speak, but we're able to be at functions and things of that nature together. I do want to bring up something else that you said um, about you being on vacation and it yep. being, you know, you did things with your kids and he mm-hmm. did stuff with his kids. Mm-hmm. A lot of times we see people say, well, I feel like two separate families. Well, that's mm-hmm. what you are. Yes. You said that one time. I heard it on a podcast and it was just like the validation that I needed because I put these crazy expectations on my marriage. And you're right. We are two separate families. I mean, bottom line is that's exactly what we are. And for some reason, I did not see it like that. I wanted this nuclear, like I owed that to my children. Like, oh, I've got to give them this perfect, perfect, you know, utopia marriage. And I'm going to bend over backwards to make it perfect. And instead, I did the opposite and, you know, ran ran myself ragged. I recall um, Lori and I was coaching a couple one time and, and, we told them that, you know, that, you know, you have two separate families living in the same house. Actually, you kind of have three, really. Um, and I recall the, the, the wife and the, or the stepmom and the relationship. She was like, I don't care. This is going to be a, a one family household. Wow. <laughs> and I was like, I'm telling you, you already have issues. And that is part of it. And if you keep doing this, it's going to completely destroy your relationship. I understand what you want, but, and you can get what you want down the road, but you, it takes, you have to build up to get to that. You can't start out with that. Yes. Yeah. I, I have to agree with you because um, it's the relationship. If it keeps getting better and better with my stepchildren, we are going to become more and more and more of a family. By me putting these right. expectations in my thumb on things, that's where it stops and that's where that relationship stops and it becomes just so rigorous and, and non-joyful and non-loving because it's more of my expectation is going to be stepped on this family and I'm going to get what I want instead of letting the not showing effect kind of allow the relationships to genuinely grow instead of it being all about my demand and my and my and what I need back or my respect that I that I need or whatever the case may be. Does that make sense? Makes perfect sense. So that's the boundaries and the since February getting home. And I got to remember that he's going to get older and he's not always going to be that baby that loves Miss Page no matter what. He's going to be a teenager one day and I want to have my boundaries in check to where our relationship is protected. So we're not getting into something strenuous as he gets older. Right. You want to build that foundation. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. And that, that's where that's where I'm kind of really seeing that um, that's able to happen. So but um, it's been a journey. <laughs> Having two separate families. Do you sometimes feel like that you're living with your significant other as a roommate? I'm so glad you mentioned this um, because 
this could be a whole podcast in and of itself. I am struggling with that big time right now. Um, that has nothing to do with the not showing. That has, um, I, again, I think because I put so much emphasis on the family um, that, and I, I kind of ran myself thin for so long that um, that was where I was giving all of my effort. Um, and so was, so was my husband. Like it, we weren't, we weren't putting back into the marriage. We, we love each other. We, we, we live well together, Lori, but yeah, right now that's exactly how it, how it's feeling. Um, the only thing is though that I've, I read this and I hate that I can't remember where I read it though. And it said, you know, even though your stepchildren, excuse me, even though your biological children might be, um, first and then your husband and then, you know, and then so on, if you still, it's your marriage and I've got to, I've got to figure out a way to, um, when we are away from the kids, cause the kids are fine. And my kid's relationship with my husband is fine. And, you know, his relationship with me is fine. Now it's, I'm finding now it's time that we kind of refocus back on each other again. And if, in, mm-hmm. in, in order to lose that roommate feel. <laughs> I, I, well, the reason why you don't focus on each other when there's problems is because when you do have that time alone or you're out on a date or whatever, you're always talking about the problems and the kids and the negativity that's happening. And so you naturally decide, at least it happened to us, is like, you know what, if if we're going to get together and and always talk about the kids and fuss about things, then then we'll just stop. We'll just mm-hmm. stop doing it because it's not fun for anybody. Okay, so expand on that. So I love that we're talking about this because this is kind of, it's not, it's, 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 yeah. So that was, like you said, the topic of our conversation all the time. And now it's not so much. And, Mm -hmm. but now I've trained myself for the first year and a half, almost two years of our marriage. That's all we talked about. So I'm having to almost retrain our date nights (laughs) and we're, we're a little bit at a loss on what to talk about because I have ruled the conversation for so long to be about the kids. So (laughs) you go out dating, there's those awkward moments. (laughs) Yes. I hate to admit it. We were two and a half years married and it feels like it's already been 20. (laughs) That's what blended marriages are. Uh Blended marriages are like dog years. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And I I do hate the phone thing because. Oh. You know, Lori and I both tend to do that. Um, I, I think she does it more than I do. But, uh-uh. you, you know, you're sitting there at a table. It's like your date night. And then you're both sitting there ignoring each other, looking at the phone. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what? But, yeah. um, I mean, you, you have to be more intentional uh, with date night yeah. to solve yeah. that problem. So there are things you can do beforehand. You know, used to the old tactic was, you know, you've tr- you try to find a movie that you – both would enjoy and that way you go to dinner after the movie and it gives you something to talk, talk about. about. Okay. And so there, yeah. And like so maybe that. there's other things you can do. Um, you know, maybe if you went shopping first and then to dinner, then you could talk about, you know, things you saw while you were shopping or people that you saw or whatever. So you try to find topics that you can bring up at dinner that you both can talk about. And, and so you're not having one of those, well, we don't really know what to talk about. <laughs> moments mm-hmm. yeah but i'm so glad y'all mentioned that because that is that has got to be okay so it, i guess i guess i was kind of thinking that well maybe that's just a marriage thing but i do believe that sometimes that is presented from a blended family you know and and life is just a little different you know so um i'm glad that that conversation got started because i definitely do want to get more intentional about that because that is i could so see how blended families can get in that rut big time well it's kind of like nuclear families going through empty nest syndrome True. Yeah. Yep. Or well, the other thing too is if you if you do find it difficult to have conversations on date nights, then try to find something that is not going to put you together um, for a long period of time. So maybe you'll go somewhere that's uh, that's fast food or whatever and eat versus somewhere that where you know it's going to take an hour and a half to get in and out. Yeah, that's definitely more my husband anyway. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't like that li- that long dining. <laughs> Right. And so, I mean, if you're sitting there, you know, for an hour and a half and you got to try to think of conversations, that's, that can be stressful in and of itself. Whereas if you're somewhere where you're going to be in and out in 20 minutes or 30 minutes, and that's a whole lot easier to do. Yeah, you're certainly right. 
One thing David and I do is there's certain TV shows that we'll watch. Like we watch Shark Tank together mm-hmm. and because we like talking about the businesses and all this stuff. Um, I like watching live PD, but David can't watch it with me because he gets upset <laughs> trying to tell the cops how to do their jobs. <laughs> that is great. <laughs> so, I mean, you can find something that's just a commonality. Um, playing cards. We, we had family game night, you know, and even though it wasn't just me and David, it was still fun because David and I, you know, we pick on each other a lot. So that just gave us an opportunity to pick with more people. No, absolutely. <laughs> we can't watch The Bachelor. Was it The Bachelor? Yeah, we can't watch that one together either. Why is yeah. that? <laughs> yeah. Because we laugh hysterically at the girls crying. <laughs> yeah, we, we laugh about that. And then I always say, I wish I was on that show. I do this and I do that. And she goes, what do you mean you wish you was on the show? <laughs> and then I'm like, they don't have the retired version. <laughs> Hey, there you go, David. When I die, you can have the old timer bachelorette. There you go. Great idea. Be David. <laughs> David turns gigolo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't think it would. It wouldn't go the same because it's you know the women to be crying or whatever, and I'd be like, get out of out of here. What is that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you don't even know me. <laughs> <laughs> you know me for two weeks and you crying. Too funny. Get a grip, girl. Mm-hmm. Y'all all come sit around the pool. We'll talk about it. <laughs> you have given this some thought. I know, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> yep. He's, he's picturing it in his head. I love it. I, I see him it. sucking his stomach in as he says it. <laughs> I love it. Yep, get me one of those dark tans. Who's the guy that always had the tan? The oh, the actor guy. Uh, I can't remember him, but he, he always had a tan all the time. And, How old is this actor guy? Oh, he's probably like in his seventies or something now. But he just he played. I don't remember he played Dracula once. You know, back in probably the eighties or something like that. But <laughs> uh, anyway, it was just one of those things where you always saw him with a tan. He had a commercial not long ago where he was doing something and he had a uh, like one of his little tanning mirrors or something on him. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I I can't. I'm gonna have to look it up now. I can't remember. But anyway. I'm going to do the same thing. I'll be the old dude with a tan. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I know that you've um, heard me talk about painting. Mm-hmm. David and I actually went to a man down the road that does painting. Mm-hmm. You know, I like painting ceramics. Well, this is more just a canvas painting. And you pick out what you want, and he'll help you draw it kind of thing. And we went and did that. And surprisingly, we enjoyed it. Yes, Yeah. Maybe because I was laughing so hard and the guy was like, it's okay. You know, you're just haven't pulled it all together yet. And he got upset with me because I really didn't care. And I was laughing so hard. I'm like, <laughs> I'm fine, dude. I mean, it was like he expected me to be upset by it or something. Yeah. But then the guy starts with David of, oh, that's amazing. That's sellable. And I'm like, Lord, help me. I'm going to put paint on my head because my head's going to bang up against this. <laughs> so how hard. But we went to putt-putt. I mean, you know, just we like going yard selling together, even if it's only for 30 minutes, just to go do something. Yeah. So I looked it up. His name's George Hamilton. That's it. That's it. Um, that's going to be something that has to be a priority, though, because we have all of this activity with children in one week. And, um, and then they all, they all leave for a week and then they all come back for the week. So, um, okay. So you've got a week. We do, we do. And then granted, I mean, we still, even though they're not sleeping in our, in our bed, so to speak, but they still have activities we still go to and things of that nature. But it's, again, it's just caused us, I think, to get in a little bit of a rut because of, we kind of come down from all the running and the going with the kids home. Mm-hmm. And it's like we kind of, huh. and so I think it's just limited making that time and reprogramming us a little bit. We've basically just kind of, I mean, I, I guess for lack of better words, just gotten lazy on that intentionality. And that's, what, that's I think that's just going to be something that's always going to have to be top focus. Like before the kids leave, I need to know where me and my husband are going for that date night, whether it's, you know, the next night or, or you know, some other time, but just some, just some kind of special time. Uh, because during the week that we had the kids, it is a lot of times that we're in two different directions, day, night after night after night. Right. Just because there's so many of them. Like I said, 30 minutes. Yep. You'd be amazed. Yep. 
But I am glad that that got talked about and discussed because that is something that definitely needs to be a priority. Um, you know, because um, them seeing us, you know, connecting and things like that's only, you know, just like any family, that's it just makes the family get stronger. So that that time for us together is definitely important. Yeah, and schedule it. Yeah, uh, David and I used to when we would drop my son off to meet his dad, we would always go get something to eat. Mm-hmm. That was kind of our thing. And a lot of times, I'll admit it, that when we don't have my son, David would say, come on, let's go out to eat. And I'm like, dude, I don't want to go anywhere. Yeah. I just want to chill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's more of a going person than I am. That's me. Yeah, I have my, to force her. And my husband, I've got to force him. Yeah. So, yeah. <sighs> yeah. But then usually we'll get back home and just say, I'm glad you talked me into right. this. I had a good time. <laughs> yeah. So it is it just sometimes to recharge that bucket a little bit, you know. So. Yeah. Well, the other thing too is is looking for things to do on date night that's out of the norm. It doesn't always have to be dinner and a movie. Yeah. You know, look for things Ooh, that go to an escape room. Oh yeah. I've that, never so done that, so I definitely want to do that. So yeah. They're not expensive. It takes teamwork. It's fun. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So if you're gonna if you are gonna go to dinner, then hit an escape room first. Okay. You know, you're what, forty five minutes to an hour to get out of that thing and then then go to dinner. Then you'll be talking the whole time about how much fun it was and you know, I'm gonna have so to surprise to them about. on that one. <laughs> but I've been, and but I'm yeah, but I'm gonna have to uh I think that would be amazing. I've totally forgot about that. I've always wanted to try that. Yeah, but, but there's a lot of things that you can do that's, you know, outside of the norm. And I don't think people think about it that often. And that's, that's why I was saying about being more intentional about yes. your date nights and, and, and thinking about things that are, that are different and you can experience different things together, especially if it's the first time you've both experienced something, because then you can say, Hey, we finally found something that neither of us done to, with somebody else. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Especially you, sir, with three X's. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I know. Again, drunk on love, I suppose. Because I mean, I'm going. Wait a minute, Paige. Like, <laughs> yeah, so funny. Are you sure you're not going to have any children? We are, <laughs> we are not. We are not. Did you hear, David? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I would ever. <laughs> At least she's not page five. Exactly. That's true. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> That's funny. I guess when you start snoring, she's like, he's like, turn the page. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> <laughs> it is kind of cute, though, because whenever uh, my stepson was young, his, the joke was that he couldn't remember page or we called me paper. <laughs> so I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm glad that paper didn't stick. I'm glad he finally got my name down. <laughs> That's cute, though. <laughs> Write that down because you will forget it at I some know, point. I know, I know. It was cute. He goes, where? Yeah, he would always go, where's, where's paper? Where's paper? Mm-hmm. Anyway. Well, I want to ask you something else. You said you got a grandbaby. Yes. And I, I don't. It's uh, it, it's actually my husband, his oldest, um, has a three-year-old. And so my husband's actually a grandfather. <laughs> I don't know if I'm ready to claim the title yet. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's what I was going to ask you is, I mean, do you um, see the child often? Do you goo goo and gaga over it? Or is it kind of one of those? Good, uh, good I'm question. not there yet. No, uh, it, uh, no. Um, whenever um, the grandchild was able, you know, was kind of being brought a little bit more over to our house because um, my husband and his oldest son have got a very, very close relationship. Um, it was. I know I, to answer this very quickly. No, it's it's not at all like a goo goo gaga over um, over him. He he knows me, but he's not like extra like running to me by any means. Um, and that's okay. Um, he you know he's the older he gets, he comes over here a lot more often, and um, and he is precious. And I'm glad so glad to have him in our life. But it's de- Todd is definitely more of the papa, and I'm just more Miss. Page, <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So he calls you Miss Page, or that's what they? Yeah, yeah, he just calls me Miss Page. So, um, but yeah, he's still so fairly young, though. He's, but he, I mean, not until just until I don't know, six to eight months ago, because um, he's not with, he's not with his, um, the mom of the child. So it's a very, it's a split custody kind of situation. So, um, okay. yeah, so he, um, 
he, he now brings them over a lot more often. Right. But, I guess we tell him about Nacho Kids for long. <laughs> yeah, you better believe it. <laughs> Get him a membership to the Academy for Christmas. Exactly. <laughs> there you go. Exactly. <laughs> So you might not need it now, but at some point. <laughs> and he may not ever need it, but his next girlfriend slash wife slash whatever may need it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I thought that was funny when, when Paige said that she ran across Nacho Kids website earlier and then she just kind of kept going. And then she had to go back to it and find it later on down the road. <laughs> yeah. I mean, because I, I loved it. I, it was so catchy and I was like, oh, this is smart. Like, you know, but I was also like in this little, little utopia mindset that i've got this figured out you see what i'm saying yeah, i'll never need this yes yes <laughs> those those poor people Lori and david yeah they struggled so much they just didn't know yeah they couldn't figure it out bless their heart <laughs> oh my god yeah bless their little hearts yeah and the whole thing have bless <laughs> make my sure heart. to add them to the prayer list <laughs> <laughs> Yep, yeah. and then when things started going south, you're like, "What's some stupid what? people's yeah. name?" <laughs> it was something. Was it catchy. Taco was Kids, it? Burrito Babies? What was it? <laughs> burrito Babies. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> yeah, no, it immediately made sense when I came back around. Yeah, immediately made sense. <laughs> so. Yeah, I, I'm telling you, I, I just I can't explain enough to people when that counselor told me they are not your kids 862 times yeah you know 30 minutes later when i was making fun of him in the car on the way home it was like poof that's it yeah like hello have you not been paying attention same thing i've been telling you for months see see <laughs> knock him out I'm gonna knock him out where's nerfy oh absolutely yeah Look, yeah this will be the second nerf gun <laughs> I know it's so funny because y'all were talking about the Nerf guns the other day, and I have some in my uh, in my car that I keep for my stepson. Just like they don't come into the house, they just like if I, I keep them in the back of my car for like something fun. So anyway, yeah. So now I keep it in the front seat with with me. I'm like, okay, I've got my Nerf gun now in the car. Like, like quit talking, you know. So, <laughs> so yeah, y'all y'all inspired me to have my own Nerf gun. <laughs> <laughs> awesome <laughs> yeah we got to get a nerf sponsorship yeah exactly exactly yeah, really. planting that seed yeah <laughs> yeah listen to whatever from our sponsor nerf. <laughs> 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 look i said your name 862 times you should that, give me at least a penny that's exactly <laughs> that's funny see ours are these little compact ones like you could hide them in you little pocket or something. I love it. That's great. That's great. Yeah. Concealed weapon permit. <laughs> <laughs> I need to line me up some more bullets. Let me tell you what my son did is he decided to take the little squishy part off the nerf. Yeah. The bullet. And put a staple in it. Okay. And that's what he was going to shoot David in the back oh of the head with. Oh, my God. <laughs> now tell us, go ahead. You won't do it but once. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. That's hilarious. <laughs> He's like, well, he hurts me when he shoots me. <laughs> <laughs> well, Paige, he started it because he comes on one day with this Nerf gun, you know, him and one of his buddies, and they're like. Shoot. These Mac Daddy, like, right. yeah, machine so, gun Nerf guns. Yeah, so they're lighting me up. Just pow, 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 And they're laughing and going on. I'm like, oh, you go ahead and laugh. Have fun. <laughs> you know, next couple of days later, I go to Walmart, and I get me one. <laughs> and I know which one to get because I'm experienced nerf killer. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so they they come home and I got this big old thing that's got you know this cylinder in it that rotate auto rotates and has like eight rounds in it. So I'm just pow 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 pow. I'm tearing them up. And uh, they's crying to their mom. Oh my god, David! <laughs> <laughs> and make him stop. He, he shot me in the head. That's, oh goodness. <laughs> And then we had my niece and family over here for Christmas, and my niece shot both her kids in the head <laughs> by accident. <laughs> well, she said it was an accident. She laughed when she did it, though. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Made that poor little girl cry. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, we've had several Nerf fights since then. Oh, yeah. I yeah. think, I think something it's something rewarding a, about shooting somebody. Yes. Oh, yeah. That's what I was about to say. <laughs> I, I've, enjoyed, I've, I've enjoyed having it on hand. <laughs> oh, that's something else you can do. Laser tag. We enjoy laser tag. Okay. Together. Okay. Yeah. After about five minutes, we're like <gasps> <Why? laughs> sweating to death. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Definitely do that before you eat. <laughs> okay. Yeah. The, uh, 
<laughs> the laser tag people are like, do you need us to call an ambulance? And we're like, no, nah, we're okay. We're okay. Yeah. Lori's like, falls on the ground. She's like, go on without me. Go on without me. <laughs> I'm like, you'll make it. But just breathe. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Save yourself. Huh? Uh, I know. Save yourself. Well, I'll give you mouth to mouth. She's like, no, get away from me. <laughs> That's awesome. And you you notice I did not say paintball or what is that right. other stuff? Yeah, Air airsoft. Soft. No, that's ruthless. <laughs> that leaves scars. I love paintball. Yeah, we got some great stories about paintballs. Ooh, yeah, but he's come home with like welts and bruises, and he's got the whole get up. My my son does. He's really into the the paint gun. So yeah, but David and his kids used to go in the woods in the backyard, and you, you'd hear. Bah, 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 bah. Yep. <laughs> daddy, stop. Yep. And then they come in and be like, look what daddy did to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget that one time. The first time we ever played uh, paintball with the with the triplets, they were, I don't know, how do you think they were? Probably 12-ish? Yeah, I didn't let Jackson play because he was still too little. Yeah, so we, we go out in, in the, the woods behind our house. We're playing paintball, and, um, you know, they're having a blast and all that, and and, uh, you know, shooting at the trees and stuff. I'm like, all right, here we go. We're going to play, you know, we're playing war now. You go on this side and we'll be on this side. And then we got to capture the flag in the middle. And, uh, and I shot one of my kids in the butt. <laughs> <laughs> and it's the first time he ever got hit by a paintball. And dude, you would have thought I hit him with a 30 out six. He dropped to the ground and started screaming yep. and rolling around. Oh, right. <laughs> yep. <laughs> It was hilarious. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, David, I'm going to have to edit a lot out of this. <laughs> no, this Be like, told you those nacho kids people were crazy. They're <laughs> laughing about their kids getting hurt. <laughs> if you would have saw her, you'd laugh too. It was so funny. <laughs> I got a funny to tell you real fast about one of his kids. He said, hey, Lori, come outside and record me. And I said, what are you going to do? And he said, I'm going to throw this lemon up in the air and catch it in my mouth. Uh -uh. And I said, okay. (laughs) Yeah, you knew that he was going to bust his lip open and let him do it anyway. he did. He busted his lip and he's like, oh, wow. I'm like, what did you think was going to happen? I thought you knew that's what was going to (laughs) happen. Yeah. This this is from the the person that goes don't nacho safety yeah <laughs> <laughs> unless it's my step kids <laughs> David great. he was like sixteen or seventeen that's right he was old enough to know better that's like that time I put something on Facebook about my step kids eating dog food and everybody attacked me I'm like hello they're seventeen years old if they're that stupid let them be <laughs> that's so funny oh my gosh that's funny. And then you wait, but you got it on video whenever he tried to, uh, he tried to catch it in his mouth. I do. I do. <laughs> I do. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. It's funny. We've got several good videos on his kids. One of them was, uh, one of them came home right after boot camp or whatever and decided to teach himself how to do, um, backflip. Mm-hmm. Well, the first one he did, my son caught on video and he face planted and it was <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> sure was. <laughs> I love it. But now within two days, he taught himself how to do a backflip. And I'm talking good, not just halfway, just good. Oh, yeah. He can stick it. Perfect 10. Yep. So anyway, <laughs> here we go to our little rabbit holes. Yeah, no, it's all good. <laughs> this has been so enjoyable. Like, and seriously, I've just um, it's been just a, I, I listen to y'all. So just to be able to have a conversation and um, get to know y'all's heart even better. It's, it's been very, very nice. So appreciate y'all's time so much. We appreciate you being a guest and all those kids, man. And <laughs> that's that's about all I can say. I'm still shaking my head over there. Yeah, I'll have to find a way to send you a picture because they're all going to be here for the LSU game, uh, you know, for the national championship game that's about to start. So I'll send you a picture of our big old crew. <laughs> hey, do that. Seriously. And then I can put it with um, the podcast okay. if you want me to or if they don't care. I will. I will. <laughs> we'll no, talk about that all. part later. No, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So this is where um, these are the things that like, you know, like as I'm about to go um, in the front and, you know, they're all at our house and um, and, and those are the, these are the type of nights though that I will be looking back and I'll go, this is awesome. Like, like I love the fact that they can we've got this big, huge party and it's just our family. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? I mean, <laughs> yeah. it's just us and we've got a party of 11 and 
um, that's, that is the blessing is because when we're all together and we are able to kind of unite, um, it's, it's very, very special. They're, they're great kids to each other and to us. So that they this is why we can have nine and it, and it, it can be very, very joyful. Um, so these are the good nights. Well, that's awesome. And I don't really know who to pull for in this game because I am a diehard anti Clemson fan. Yeah, all right. <laughs> I'll let you off the hook, I guess. <laughs> uh, I might have to pull for LSU. I'm nervous about this one. So this is going to be, this is going to be good. Oh my gosh. This is, I'm way, I'm nervous about this one. So this is our first national championship that I'm, whew, we'll see what happens. It's going to be a good game. Yeah. Yeah. I, I pull for for Gamecocks and anybody who's playing against Clemson. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> well, yeah. well, thank you very much. And keep in touch with us, Paige, and let us know how things are going. And if you find things that help you not feel, you know, like so roommate-ish with your significant other, let us know and we can share that with others too. Uh, definitely. Because I, I, I'm, like I said, I'm glad we ended up talking about that because I can see how set families can get in that, in that zone quickly and it needs to be intentional to get out of it. So, um, right. Yep. Well, so. There's always a few things roommates don't usually do. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's time to go. <laughs> <laughs> That's going on top of the list. I'm doing that one first. <laughs> okay. Well, I hope you wait till the kids are out of the house or <laughs> just be intentional about it. There's a lot of fun that can be had. <laughs> All right, Paige, will you go and cheer on those LSU whatevers they are? I will. I will. Y'all, this is a pleasure. Y'all have a great, great night. You too. Thank you. All right. Bye. Right, bye. Bye. It is often hard for stepmoms or anybody to admit their own negative involvement in things. Mm hmm. It's hard to see it, much less admit it. Paige admits that she went overboard with stepdaughter 13 and stepson 8. Mm. But thankfully, she came to light and started not showing. <laughs> Preach your sister. But she, like most people, didn't start nachoing till things were bad. Mm -hmm. We also talked to her about how stepmoms take it personally when their husband doesn't go with their house rules. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It might not be your house. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you know, you have those house rules that are common, and then you have ones that. You know, you don't typically agree with. Okay. Let's talk about this for one second, David. Okay. What were your house rules when I came here? I have none. Exactly. <laughs> You've said it before. It was like a free-for-all Monkey Joe's bachelor pad for it your was. kids. My house rule was to have fun. That's right. And my little boy at age three knew that someone right, because those weren't the same as our house rules. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I've admitted this before. You know, I was going through a time where I was navigating, you know, post life after divorce. So, you know, post divorce, not just for me, but for the kids. And, uh, you know, I've never been through a divorce before. Uh, kids had never been through a divorce before. I didn't know what to do or, or what I should be doing. So it just became one of those things where when they were here, I just felt like, you know, things were so bad because, you know, in my mind, things were bad. So I felt like if it was bad for them and they had the same feelings I had that, you know, I need to make this place as fun as possible because that's the only time I had fun when is when they were here, when they were gone, I was miserable. And so I guess I felt like they were just as miserable as I was when they weren't. Here. And that's what, that's what's so sad when you realize that your kids are not miserable when they're not around you. I know I'm the only one miserable. Yeah. And I said this before, I don't know if I said it on the podcast, but I've often said, you know, my, I need my kids more than they need me sometimes. <laughs> you know, that's so true. That is so true. You know, it's like communication. Like I need to hear from them more than they need to hear from me. Mm hmm. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Anyway, I like how her husband knows about her nachoing and 100% believes in the nacho philosophy. Sweet. Hand up, brother. Yep. Give me five. Yep. And I also find it funny when she's talking about flipping out on the stepkids. We've all done it. If you have not flipped out on the stepkids, you are not part of a blended family. <laughs> 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 or you are not being true to yourself. <laughs> or you got a lot of patience. Yeah. Like Xanax patience. <laughs> patience in a bottle. <laughs> patience in a bottle. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and I do also like how 
She said that the kids even noticed a difference when she started not showing. And her bio kids noticed she was less stressful. Oh, yeah. that's We hear that all the time. Sometimes people are like freak out, like, what's changed? Something's weird. Y'all think I'm kidding. When I started not showing, it was like the weight of the world was lifted off my shoulders. I felt like me again. People always say, or stepmoms will say, I feel like I lost myself in this blend. You know, I forgot who I was. Honey, nacho. When you nacho and you nacho properly, you will find that wonderful self of yourself. <laughs> that wonderful self of yourself. That's what I see it. <laughs> Here's the danger, though. Uh-oh. And we see this all the time when people come into the academy. They come in, they start doing the, the nacho improperly, and the first few steps, within the first few steps, we have the disengagement aspect of nachoing which people think that's that's all that it is, but it's not. That that becomes one of the first things that happens. It relieves a lot of the stress and pressure. And then sometimes, and this happens more often than it should, sometimes the stepmoms will then go, oh, cool, this is working great. And then they stop. They stop going down the path of what our methodology is, and they don't learn the other tools. Mm-hmm. And so <laughs> we've seen this a, a number of times where people are in the academy for two, three months. They're like, man, things are great. I don't need this anymore. I'm I'm fine. And we're like, congratulations. And then next thing you know, month five or six, they're jumping back in going, oh, I didn't realize that I didn't, hadn't developed the tools I needed to go beyond that. And all the problems I thought were gone are back now. Or they say, I should have never left y'all. <laughs> Yeah, because you think that's it. You think you think you've won. Like, oh, this is great. It's amazing. I'm winning, mm-hmm. and you are winning. But you can't stop there. This is a marathon. I wouldn't say a marathon. I'd say a journey. <laughs> but there's so much more that comes with it. For instance, if you quote quote disengage too much, eventually you could start feeling left out, lonely, and all that. Right. Yeah, it's not a just disengage and and stay in that disengagement role all the time. That's not healthy. Right. And so when we have people that hit different milestones, we know they're ready for the next step. So, for instance, someone will say, you know what? It's not my stepkids. It's how their bio parents allow them to act. Ding, ding, ding. You're on to round two. (laughs) Or... I've disengaged, things are great, my significant other has stepped up with their parenting, but I'm starting to feel left out, or I'm feeling lonely or uninvolved. Ding, 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 on to round seven. There are steps with this. There's emotions to be expected, and a lot of times, no, we don't tell you what to expect, because we don't want you to go, oh, yeah, I feel that way, let's go to the next stage. No, yeah, you have to feel that way to be able to, to progress to the next stage because it's growth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And everybody goes about it differently. It's like the stages of grief that people, you know, they go through stage one, two, and three, and then four. And then all of a sudden, next thing you know, they go back to two. Mm-hmm. And then they jump back to four again. And then, you know, this it all depends on how things are going. Everybody's unique and individual, which is why it is impossible to help people through like the Facebook group. Because it's too much involvement in what's going on in somebody's life in order to give them anything of real value um, in that kind of medium. Yeah, and like you said, a lot of people just think that not showing is disengaging. It's not. If that's all I would have done, we still would have been divorced. Yeah, we wouldn't need the academy either. We'd just go, hey, yeah, just disengage. Yeah. But no, you, I mean, there's tons of stuff around mindset, around how to identify your triggers. Self-reflection, self-awareness. Yep. So, you know, learning um, how to uh, have the right emotional weight on things. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just a bunch of stuff. It is a lot, a lot, a lot of information and education around how to make yourself a better person in the blend. And I always, always love it when people go, wow, these problems I'm having aren't really step family problems. These are problems that are Typical relationship problems, typical family problems, typical human problems. But we help with those, too. So it's not like we go, oh, okay, since that's a typical family problem or a typical relationship problem, go talk to somebody else. No, we don't. And um, But I, what I like about that part of it is that people shift the blame. Like, they don't start blaming the step family. 
You know, I didn't have these issues until I got into a step family. Well, mm, that's probably not the case. Um, or it's just not because you're in a step family that you have these issues. These issues can arise even in a bio family. But you have to admit, it seems like when something happens in a step family, it is magnified times 100. Oh, yeah. It absolutely is. There's a lot of different dynamics to maneuver and figure out in a step family that you don't have in a blended family. I'm mm-hmm. sorry. <laughs> In the bio family. <laughs> you said step family and blended family. Yeah. I was like, the step family is different than the blended family. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. So, good show for today. Yes. All right, folks. So, remember. That Paige had nine kids. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's crazy. Yep. So, remember to apply for the Not Your Kids Academy scholarship. So, email us at contact us at notyourkids.com to apply for that. Also, remember to give us some feedback on the podcast. It is completely anonymous. So head over to nachokids.com slash feedback to do that. And then join us next week because we'll be here every Friday in your ear and not in your face. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we might get in your face. We might start some YouTube stuff. Oh, there you go. All right. So uh, join us next week as you hear Lori say. Oh, Lord, David, here we go again. With what? With your youngins. My, my, my youngins moved out. That don't matter. I'm following them on Facebook. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think she don't tell me everything they do wrong on Facebook, too. <laughs> That's because I have re-engaged. <laughs> Thanks for listening to this episode of the Nacho Kids podcast. Find us online at nachokids.com. Until next time, remember, life is good when you nacho.